Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is Valentine Lister and this is my Major Arcana series. So for today's video, we're gonna cover the Moon card um, and we are going to go deep into the card. I wanted to give you a video that gave you more meat um, and a deeper understanding and an easier understanding of the card. And we are going in deep into the secret symbolism of the card so you can really understand what is in the card and how to better understand it. And that is going to include um, the numerology, the astrological correspondence of the card, as well as the upright and the reversed meanings. Hey, the moon card, what we got going on here? I know they're a little uneven, but my light keeps blaring on this one. And finally, I just propped it up with the crystal. Okay, uh, underneath. So, okay, so the moon card. Um, if you haven't watched my videos, I'm just going to tell you like that, like this one in the middle is the Rider Waite version. So you might recognize it. Um, this is the most popular version of Tarot. It was published in like the 1900s by publishers Rider and Waite. And the artwork was done by Pamela Coleman Smith. Um, and so Tarot was a card game created in the 1400s in Italy. And now it's a divination tool. Came a long way. All right. And then on the right here is a version. I beginner. It's the first deck that I started with. I think it's really easy to connect to the deck to understand the images and I find that people I read for really love this one. Um, and then this is the Way Home Tarot, another loved one um, that I connected to through the book WTF Tarot, which is one of the books I learned tarot from. And so if you're interested in any of these decks um, or the books that I learned from or that I recommend, um, I left that information in the description box below so you can check it out. Okay, the numerology of the card, getting up those Roman numerals, but here's the number 18, 18 it's associated with. So what does 18 mean? 18 represents the exploration of secret realms. So it combines the 10, the number of completion and new beginnings based on lessons learned from the past with the number eight, which represents infinity, eternal life, abundance, worldly power and influence. So one plus eight equals nine. So nine represents the end of a cycle, wisdom through experience and integration. Okay, the secret symbolism. So we're gonna go um, start with the Rider Waite version and, and describe this one. This has the most symbolism. So the moon is present here in three of its phases, one, two, and three, okay? And so if you know about the moon, how it waxes and wanes and what that means, and if you don't, I'm gonna tell you one important thing with this card is that when the moon is gaining light like this, um, these are all challenging stages for the moon as they represent the lunar stages where the moon gains light, right? So, so when the moon is waxing, which means gaining light, it's tougher. And the, that's the phase that we're seeing in the moon. And one little pro tip is that you know the moon is waxing, it's gaining light when it's filled in on the right filled in on the right like that. If this crescent, crescent was on the left, it would be a waning moon um, where it's losing the light. Like this is the waxing crescent moon. This is the first quarter moon. And then all filled in would be a full moon. All of those waxing stages where the moon is gaining light. And so what does that mean? This means that what's been hidden underneath the surface in the subconscious, it really needs to be dealt with. Um, so for example, in the waxing crescent moon, there's a felt sense of needing to push forward and overcome subconscious fears, hurts, and wounds. However, there's also the feeling of wanting to turn back to safety and into the darkness. In the first quarter moon, where the moon's like filled in half like that, there's a feeling of exposure to a conflict that you're meant to fight to build your inner strength. So it's like first quarter moon, fight, okay? And then we have, if the moon's all filled in like that, um, with the full moon, you become fully aware of the opposite aspects of your personality, the conflicts like within and your inner polarities. And that can really create an inner crisis that pushes you forward to find inner unity. So these are all important clues in understanding this moon card. Um, and then looking here, there's a face in the moon. And so who's that? Who that? Who that? Okay, that is the goddess of the moon as seen in the high priestess card. Um, so there's a few goddesses, like I had said, in the moon card that are associated um, with the high priestess and the moon, such as Selene, Artemis, Isis, and Hecate too. 
and her eyes are closed here and that represents what's hidden within us and so moving down on the card we have like this light like raining down so what is that okay we saw that in the tower card and those are hebrew yods um, and they signify the life force or the kundalini energy coming into material existence. Um, and so we do have two towers here. And besides just like giving a nod to the tower card, um, which, you know, we saw back, I believe that was, yeah, number 16. Um, besides that, um, I couldn't find any other type of meaning, um, but they most likely re represent our ego, solidified wisdom, or stubbornness. And so it also could represent, like the towers represent um, protection from what we're afraid of. And then moving down to this pool, we saw a similar pool in the star card. Um, and this represents the universal mind or the cosmic conscious or the collective unconscious, whatever you want to call it. Um, but the water also symbolizes the moon's link with the tides of the earth, um, also the emotions and the unconscious realms. And this lobster here, what is this lobster all about? Okay, that represents the zodiac sign of cancer, which is ruled by the moon. So cancer, um, back in the day, um, it's, it wasn't always represented by a crab. Sometimes they put in a lobster there instead. I'm not sure why I'll have to look into that in the future. Got to research that one. Okay, moving on to these two dogs up here, these two, or two canines, I should call them canines, because one is a wolf. We got a wolf on the right here, and one is a dog on the left here. So the dog represents the animal part of herself that has been tamed and adapted to life in the physical realm. Um, the dog is grounded, practical, loyal, faithful, protective, and loves unconditionally. And then we have this wolf. And the wolf represents the untamed part of ourselves and the soul, the wild soul. Um, the wolf has a deep, connect, uh, a deep connection to its instincts and an appetite for, for freedom. And so we said like the moon is gaining light. So the moon is lighting up this path in the center through the mountains. And remember, if you remember from previous cards beginning in the full, the mountains represent the cold, hard principles of mathematics, the heights of abstract thought, wisdom, and understanding. And the path is the path of the soul and the road back, back home to your higher self. All right, moving on to the light seer's variation here, which I, oh, I love this one. Okay, so we have an image of a full, full moon. She didn't use all the stages. She just used the full moon right here, right? Kind of a difficult part of the moon phases. Um, and we have, she, she chose to put, I believe, two wolves on each side instead of a dog and a wolf. Um, and she put one black and one white. So white would represent, like in comparison right to the rider weight, is the pure untamed self. And the black would be the one with like the earthly wisdom, kind of the more grounded one or seeing like the, the reality of life here, this black wolf here. Okay, down here, we have this woman falling into the pool. Um, and she, so she's diving into that subconscious, that collective conscious, that cosmic mind. Um, and what's cool is that this card is a real nod to the story of Pisces, where Venus and her son Eros dived into the water um, and, and turned into two fish to escape the monster Typhon. Um, and if you can see here, there's a mandala on the woman's dress, and that represents the heights of abstract thought, wisdom, and understanding, um, like in comparison, and, and that's similar to what the mountains represent in the rider weight version here. Okay, and then on the left here, we have the way home tower variation, and she also chose to put a full moon in here, right? We got these, uh, these two wolves here. Um, so the white one here is howling at the moon and this white wolf represents the pure untamed self. So similar to the, what the light, light seer's tower has here. And then like in the light seer's version on this side, we have a black wolf underneath that's um, the, and he's immersed in the cosmic mind or the subconscious. So a little bit of a variation on like, you know, what the wolves represent and what they're doing. Um, and so the, 
like um the pool here is within the mountains right the mountains of that mat mathematical abstract thought and wisdom and understanding and then the pool makes the path in between that which i thought was really cool and then you can see this like black lobster coming up which i i love this thing um and so that is like representing cancer the crab okay so on to the color symbolism to really help you understand what's going on in this card. The colors are like a cheat sheet, it's just like the numbers. If you understand the numbers and the colors, it's also gonna help you remember quickly because you're not gonna remember everything when you start pulling these cards. You really gotta like practice over and over. Um, you probably have to like come back to this video a bunch of times to really like remember um, what's in the card. Okay, so we have yellow and yellow was a big one, right, for representing the soul. Okay, and so what the soul represents, creativity, optimism, and enthusiasm. Then we have light blue here, and light blue is a big one representing compassion. We have a lot of blue here, like in these two cards. So light blue represents uh, compassion, serenity, and mental clarity. And then we have a little bit of red here, not too much, but in this little cancer, the crab, this lobster, um, and that represents desire, passion, vitality, and courage. So this lobster of desire. <laughs> uh, okay, and then we have green here. We have a little like green tones up there, but mainly here in the grass, in the rider wheat. And that represents healing, growth, fertility, and prosperity. Then we have gray, a little gray here, some gray here and gray here. Gray represents wisdom, so the mixing of black and white. Then we have like royal blue, like a deeper blue in the light series deck. And that represents loyalty, insight, inspiration, and independence. Then we have a lot of black in the light seers tarot, uh, tarot. <laughs> and that represents power, the unconscious, um, banishing, and wisdom. And then we have a lot of white here, a little bit of white here, right, with this wolf. And that have represented purity, wholeness, and protection. Okay, so the astrological correspondence of the card. So I gave you a little hint here when I was talking about the Light Seer's Tower, because this is such a beautiful image that um, would give a nod to the zodiac sign of Pisces. So the moon card is actually associated with the sign of Pisces. I know it was uh, confusing there because we had other zodiac symbolism, um, but it is associated with Pisces. So it's why, right? So I thought about this. And so a signature of Pisces is their willingness to dive into the subconscious. Um, so Pisces are usually willing um, to go to the dark places of the mind and human behavior because they believe that uncovering that knowledge will lead to a higher level of understanding, transcendence, and love. Um, and there's beauty in the dark places that needs to be brought to light. And it's, it's this, and it's also a wisdom that really connects us to each other because it also represents um, the emotions and connecting with other people for a higher purpose. Okay, and I also gave this card a little nickname and it's you feel disillusioned. So if you don't know why I gave this card a nickname, you need to go watch the easiest way to understand the major arcana, okay? Because um, I gave you a little cheat sheet, a little story from the cards right away in an easy way. Um, remembering that the major arcana is connected together in a story. There's no way you're gonna remember every detail. So this is a quicker way to really get these cards. I'm going to link a card up here for you and you can also find that video in the description box below. Go check it out. Okay, so the upright meaning of the card, it means working through your subconscious fears. So this may be unpleasant or it could feel really cathartic depending on like whether you fight the process or surrender to it. So you need to pay attention to what's going on in your dreams, in your imagination and gut feelings to understand what you need to acknowledge, work through and release. So what does that mean? So some examples of what that, that could look like is recurring dreams or nightmares. Noticing that events are bringing up strong emotions about things that happened in the past. Um, being drawn to uh, spiritual practices that make you aware of the subconscious, such as tarot, astrology, meditation, Kabbalah, or other mystical sects of religion, religion or religions, um, or things like journaling. Um, 
having strong emotions that you can't handle could be another you know sign signature meaning of this card um, seeking out a therapist um, your psychic abilities are being uncovered uh, could be a person such as an ex or a family member is trigger triggering you which is the universe's way of making you deal with it so you can heal it so the reversed meaning of the card so the rever if it's reversed it's coming out upside down and if it's reversed it means energy is still there still the same meaning except the difference is that that energy is being blocked or avoided it's not coming through it's being blocked by you by someone else or the universe like could be for a reason you know um and so what does it mean for this card so it means you're pushing your subconscious issues and fears under the surface um, because you don't want to deal with them. Um, so it could be things like being afraid of tarot cards, astrology, seeing a psychologist, journaling, um, mystical sex, sects, not, yeah, sects, okay, <laughs> or groups, I mean, okay, etc. cetera. Um, drinking heavily or another self-destructive practice to stuff your feelings back down. Blaming others for your issues and not taking responsibility um, for your own well-being could all be meanings if this card comes out reversed. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this video on the moon card. And this is just a quick reminder that if you like this video and want to make sure to catch the next video in this series, um, which will be the sun card, uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified for that. Also, if you're watching this way into the future when I finish the series or if you just want to catch up on the cards that I've already covered, I'm going to link a major arcana playlist over here and I'm going to also link um, like a related video up here for you guys. All right. Take care. Love you guys. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for whenever I release a new video every single week.